ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the grief spot and limited q3 and 9 months fy24 earnings conference call from the management we have with us mr nagesh baswanhali non executive vice chairman gcl dr arup basu managing director gcl akila balachandar group cfo gcl sanjay bell ceo and ed gempl narsimha jayakumar ceo grief retail chandrashekhar tyagaranjan cfo gempl as a reminder all participants lines will be in the listen no name mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the opening remarks are concluded should you need assistance during the conference call please signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone i now hand the conference over to mr nagesh baswanali non executive vice chairman of grief spot and limited thank you i know to you sir good afternoon everybody thank you for joining the q3 call for grief spot uh at the outset let me say a few words and then hand it over uh to management for the commentary um uh, we are happy to report the reports uh, the details of which the cfo will be discussing shortly uh, at the outset our diverse portfolio and the strategy over the years with a commitment to fuel agnostic solutions have played a pivotal role in driving our advancements we are also glad to report the synergistic collaboration with excel control linkage is bringing new capabilities and newer avenues of growth for greaves uh and greaves engineering continues to expand its presence in engines and uh, other areas greaves retail backed by its asset light high uh, roc business can fortify its presence in the aftermarket aligning with our goal of uh, continued expansion both in domestic and other markets our enduring success is rooted in steadfast focus on capability building our value proposition and our ability to fulfill the requirements of our diverse customer base with that let me hand it over to dr basu the md of greaves thank you nagesh uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen my commentary is on the performance of greaves engineering that is engines and excel control linkage we continue to make good progress on our ongoing program to build a future ready fuel agnostic portfolio to gradually wean us from a dependence on demand for diesel engines as i mentioned during the analyst call on 8 november 2023 The IC engine and genset portfolio is being augmented with greener fuel agnostic variants that can use CNG, biodiesel and ethanol blended fuels. In addition, we have commenced sales of fuel agnostic engine components. This new product line utilizes our current manufacturing equipment and will help us extract more value from our manufacturing infrastructure and other equipment. Additionally as this new product line relies on our existing domain expertise in precision machining the business can grow relatively rapidly Simultaneously we are increasing our share of exports which in Q3 FY24 has increased to about 15% of our revenues The integration with Excel control linkage has moved to the next stage with the initiation of cross selling products and services simultaneously we are continuing to augment our prevailing domain depth in mechanical engineering with mechatronics and electronics the latter will also help accelerate the growth of electronic sensors in q3 fy24 reeves engineering delivered an operating profit margin of 15.5% on revenues of 375 crore higher than the 5.5% ebitda that was delivered in q3 fy23 and higher than the 14.5% ebitda delivered in q2 fy24 
in the engine segment. Operating profit margin improved to 12.6% in Q3 FY24 on revenues of 301 crore compared to 5.5% EBITDA in Q3 FY23 and 10.5% in Q2 FY24. Excel Control Linkage delivered an operating profit margin of 27.5% on revenues of rupees 74 crore in Q3 FY24. Overall, the prevailing tailwinds in the Indian economy, our increasing global customer base, the diversity of our platform technologies and application areas, combined with our brand griefs, makes us op optimistic about the future. Thank you. I now hand it over to Sanjay Bale. Over to you, Sanjay. Thank you, Arup. I'm going to talk about the Greece Electric Mobility business for quarter three. Overall, uh, Greece Electric Mobility had an excellent quarter in three-wheeler business with 37% Y-on-Y growth, while our L3 business registered a healthy 18% growth the L5 business nearly doubled during the quarter with 94% year-on-year growth. Our new electric cargo three-wheeler business, Greece Ultra branded, is now FAME subsidy eligible and listed on the NAP portal. Uh, just give me one second. The NAP portal, effective 15th of January 2024. The electric passenger three-wheeler vehicle business uh, has also been FAM certified now, and we expect listing on the NAP portal over the coming few days. We are confident of a good retail offtake starting this month for our EV three-wheeler business, both for ultra cargo and passenger vehicles. In our two-wheeler business, while the overall volumes declined on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, Ampere registrations grew on Wahan by 9% in quarter three, and the brand continues to be amongst the top five electric scooters in India. As announced during the Auto Expo last year, we will soon be launching the much-awaited NXQ scooter. This new-age, high-speed, fully-connected scooter is 100% in-house designed by the Greaves design team and will be manufactured at our EV mega site in Ranibit. This new scooter from Ampere Portfolio is equipped with one of the lightest operating software and brightest touchscreens, ensuring seamless navigation and connectivity, elevating the riding, riding experience to a new height. With an, XP, with an objective to demonstrate NXG's impressive power performance and superiority, we have embarked upon an unprecedented 5,100-kilometer long Kashmir to Kanyakumari drive on January 14th of this year, uh, just about a, a three weeks back, and we started symbolically with Riyasi, the source of the lithium find in Jammu Kashmir. This is the first of its road kind road travel challenge undertaken, and that too in extreme climatic condition and vastly varying road terrains of the country by any electric vehicle of any format in India. With these vehicles halfway in their journey, the response from the field has been extremely positive thus far. We continue to stay invested in launching new products and variants, and we are hopeful uh, of continuing profitable growth in the coming quarters. Thank you. May I now hand over to Narsimha from Greece Retail. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Narsimha Jaikumar, CEO of Greece Retail. Uh, very pleased to give you an update for quarter three. Greece Retail uh, recorded a revenue of uh, 141 crores for quarter three, FI24. Uh, very strong EBITDA margins of 21.4%. We had higher spare part sales in all our core markets with much better product mix. Uh, Q3 uh, EBITDA margins were up by 310 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. And for the nine months uh, financial year 24, we have, we have recorded a revenue of 425 crores, that's 8% Y-on-Y. Uh, Greece Retail continues to be committed to its strategy to be a fuel agnostic aftermarket player with a focus on multi-brand uh, part sales. During the quarter, Greece Retail expanded its range of various products, uh, namely our Greece Pavaraja batteries, various EV parts for the aftermarket, uh, catering to the e-rickshaw segment. 
These include motors, controllers, chargers, DC-DC converters, etc. for the e-rickshaw segment. Uh, we also did launched a number of digital and technology initiatives, including the launch of our new Grief Care app for three-wheeler and two-wheeler customers that enable them to digitally manage their service bookings and get notifications when their service is due. Considering the growth of the EV population, particularly e-rickshaws, the business continues to expand distribution and retailing reach, as I've stated previously in our calls across the country, with a greater emphasis on tier two, three, four cities and towns in the north and east of the country. At the end of quarter three, uh, we had our retailing network had approximately 9,300 retailers, including 250 specialist stockets for our EV parts and batteries, 130 plus distributors, and we have engaged with 21,000 plus mechanics in the country. Uh, we are our recent launch of our uh, Greece Upahar, which is our mechanic loyalty program app, uh, and our other apps strengthens our connections with our partners and customers. Uh, I just want to reiterate that we are a very uh, asset-like business and with a very high ROC. ROC for the quarter exceeded 100%. So excited about that. Uh, just handing it over to now Akila. Thanks, Nasima. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are very happy to report our consolidated revenue for the quarter of 665 crore, up by 30% on a year-on-year -year basis, compared to 514 crores last year, Q3. On a standalone basis, GCL has reported a revenue of 443 crore, up by 21% year-on-year. Excel, as already shared by Arup, reported a revenue of 74 crore, and Electric Mobility has reported a revenue of 149 crores. For the nine-month period, GCL has reported a standalone revenue of 1,297 crores, up by 17%. Again, on the standalone level, GCL reported an EBITDA of 67 crores, which is a growth of 73% year-on-year. A margins have improved by 450 basis points. That is, we moved from 10.7% to 15.2%. Here I would like to share that we continue on our EBITDA improvement journey. This quarter, we have reported EBITDA at 15.2%, which is possibly the highest in the last 8 to 10 quarters. And if I were to look at GCL plus Excel as a combination, the margin stands at a healthy 16.9%. This now puts us back on track of our historical trend of 13 plus percent margins of pre-COVID levels. On a YTD basis also, our EBITDA for the nine month period stood at 175 crores. Same period last year, our EBITDA was 100 crores and hence a growth of 76% year on year. Our improvement in margins has also been by 450 basis points for this period, up from 9.1% to 13.5%. Along with the margins, we have been very focused on capital efficiency, both at the capex level and at the working capital level, and this has ensured that our ROC today stands at a healthy 50 plus percentage level. In terms of balance sheet strength, the company continues to be almost at a zero debt level, and we have a consolidated cash position of 600 plus crores, which we can be used for further expansion as we go forward. Looking forward, we remain steadfast in our commitment to our growth strategy. We are also confident that our strong foundation and unwavering commitment to excellence will sustain our success in the forthcoming quarters and the exciting opportunities the future holds. One area that we had seen a lot of pressure in the early part of last year was the overall commodity cycle, and that led to increase in the raw material cost for some of our product segments. I'm happy to note that the commodity cycle softening is having a positive impact, and as we go forward, we're expecting the raw material prices and raw material cost as a percentage of revenue to remain stable in the coming quarters. Uh, I would just like to take a step back. Uh, we did receive a number of questions over the last quarter regarding fame subsidy. 
and I would like to point out to the note number six in our consolidated financials and would like to share again that Jempel has submitted its response to the notice that it received from MHI within the prescribed timelines. The management has complied with the scheme, duly considering and supported by legal advice. However, keeping in mind the interest of the consumers and without accepting any of the allegations, contentions or statements in the notice and without any prejudice, uh, Jempel on October 27, 2023, offered to amicably resolve and put a quietness to the matter, refunded an amount of 140 crores towards the subsidy reimbursed by the MHI to date, which is 124.9 crore and an interest of 15.1 crore. The amount refunded and the subsidy receivable of rupees 337.3 crores net of provisions have been fully provided for as an exceptional item in the statement during the second quarter of the financial year. Uh, with this, there is no further liability which rests on the company regarding this matter. Again, uh, this is uh, all explained in the last quarter, but given number of questions, I am just re-clarifying the entire position. With this, I now open the floor for any Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Amin Tirani from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yes, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the uh, EV business uh, as well as uh, more specifically on the EV two-wheelers. You mentioned that you know you are uh, you know going to be soon launching um, the uh, the NXG which was shown at the last Auto Expo. Uh, I just wanted to you know, get a sense from you in terms of how we should think about uh, pricing, given that uh, a lot of the uh, uh, startups as well as legacy companies have uh, launched uh, lower-priced products. And B, um, in an extreme case, you know, at least one company you know, has started launching uh, extremely low-priced products, you know, almost taking the price of a... Uh, you know, a, a smart EV to the price of a very basic EV uh, more recently. So how should we think about pricing and profitability uh, going forward as you embark on new launches and try to regain, you know, some of the market share? Yeah, thank you very much. I will take it. Sanjay Bahal here. Look, uh, if, you, if you've seen uh, the philosophy of pricing by Greece. In fact, over the past four years, if you look at our electric portfolio, we have adequately demonstrated uh, cost, and, cost and price in this category and will continue to stay the course. Our core philosophy is to balance growth, market share, and profitability. So you, uh, and if you look at the overall numbers, uh, we still are, even without subsidy, a double-digit gross margin positive business in EV. And I'm specifically talking to two-wheelers that you referred to. So what is to be expected is uh, in the new scooter that we are launching, the price will be competitive to make sure that we stay unit economics positive, And if subsidy gets restored going forward, which we expect, I think it will be a healthy margin. That's what you should expect. Okay. Okay. That's uh, that's good to know. Um, and as a uh, you know a corollary to this, um, how much of a benefit are you already seeing, or you know are expecting to see from the fact that uh, sell prices have fallen? Uh, so you know, uh, so a, a uh, you know uh, is this double digit gross margin uh, you know uh, helped already because of the decline in sell prices, or this is something that can get some more benefit going forward? 
Yeah, so uh, partly you're right. In fact, there has been a globally a softening of sell prices that we've seen over the last two quarters. And part of uh, the benefit is being passed on by the industry uh, in the in the that is helping us also. So that is there. And uh, we, we expect that with the overall scale going up in electric uh, vehicle industry, and across all the formats there, we expect the sell prices to continue to stay where they are. And if that happens or you know, come, continue to come down slightly, and if that happens, you will find us also becoming more price competitive and margin healthy as we go forward. That's right. Great. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll come back in the queue. Okay. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and one on a touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Jyoti Singh from Aryan Capital Markets Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, um, sir and uh, Greece team, congratulations on a very good set of numbers this Q3. And uh, sir, my question is on the growth side. So like what are expectations going forward for the 25 and 26? Uh, Jyoti, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, uh, ma'am, my question is on the growth side. What are expectations on the top line side going forward? Oh, you're talking of the future? Yes. So, Jyoti, uh, we will not be, uh, as a policy, the company has not been giving any uh, forward guidance, and that is the policy that we continue to have. But if you have been, I mean, you've been tracking us for the past so many quarters, uh, there has been a transformation journey, which is now in play for more than seven to eight quarters. And uh, whatever has been talked about and uh, committed by the management is a lot of things work in progress. A lot of things are continuing now to play out. So that is uh, what I would be able to share about it. Yes, ma'am. Um, ma'am, also, it will be very helpful if you can guide us, uh, you know, segment-wise. Like, which segment we are seeing more traction, that will also be helpful for us. Uh, when you say segment, would it be retail and the engines business, or is there anything else that you're looking forward? Yes, ma'am, retail and engine business. Sure. So, if you were to look at both the business performance over the last... Uh, uh, this quarter, as well as as a journey over the last seven eight quarters, uh, let me let me just go back in time a bit. Where the three engines business, if I were to take uh, Q3 FI20, Q1 FI23, and the first seven quarters, we've really moved from 253 crores on a quarterly run rate to now 300 plus crores. Uh, and then a bit by improving from 2.9 percentage margin to 12.6 percent. Uh, on the Greaves retail, we moved the needle from 121 crores to 141 crores, and the margin improvement has been significant from 16.5 percent to 21.4 percent. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, we have done a growth of uh, approximately 21 percent compared to same period last year and uh, at a Greece cotton uh, level. Uh, and this has been the journey of the company. Given that we acquired Excel in, uh, on, in May of 2023, uh, this also now has been addictive to our overall business performance. And if you note, Excel has done extremely well. They've delivered results of 74 crores top line and an EBITDA margin of 27.5%. Uh, 
GCL plus Excel hence gives me a very good uh, combined result of 517 crores for the quarter with a margin of close to 17%, uh, 16.9 to be very precise. So uh, this is the journey that we have now gone through. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star N1 to ask a question. A reminder to all participants, you may press star N1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Imanshu Dukkar from Safe Games. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, I would like if you could just uh, give us an update around uh, the cash deployment plans uh, on your capex on your time on any acquisitions and what are you looking at right now? Sure, thanks, Himanshu. So, Himanshu, as you are aware, we currently have close to 400 crore plus of cash at a standalone level, and close to 600 crore plus at the consolidated level, which means. Our subsidiary Breeze Electric Mobility has 200 crores approximately of cash on their books. Uh, both these companies have very strong capex plans going forward. Uh, Greece Cotton, our capex plan is approximately 100 crore for this year, and Greece Electric Mobility has got its own plans of another 100 crores uh, capex in the current year. Uh, all these investments are towards development of newer technologies and uh, improving the existing product portfolio. Uh, this is core to the business and that is where we are currently investing. Apart from that, uh, we are also actively looking for opportunities where we can acquire stakes in businesses which will be additive to our core businesses, which is both the engines, retails and electric mobility businesses. So we do have enough, uh, you know, strength in our balance sheet today to do some really good acquisitions. I hope that answers your question. Uh, just a follow-up on that, uh, especially on the electric side. Uh, could, like, what is the current uh, capacity levels and utilizations? And in this new capex, are you looking at uh, design-related capex, or is it again going to be towards uh, some amount of capacity? Uh, can I so, Sanjay Bella, look, most of the capex till now, if you know the Rani Pet, uh, which is the EV mega site capacity for our two-wheeler business, a quarter of a million already existing with one shift and going to half a million uh, scooters in two shifts there. So, there is very limited capacity. Most of this is growth-related capex, which is getting into product development. Uh, that's really the number one, and capacity is minimal in the current financial year. We already have uh, adequate capacity. Both are two and three wheeler businesses. Uh, sorry, I'm not able to follow. Like, this 100 crore that you're planning to spend in the coming year, like what are you... Uh... Most of it is on product development. Capacity is limited because both our two and three wheeler businesses have adequate capacity and head space for continued growth for some time to come. Okay. Any insights on your product pipeline? Uh, in terms of like what are the kind of products you're planning to launch or some other gaps in your product portfolio? Because I understand uh, given the recent launches also you're kind of covering most of the gaps uh, different types available. So what, is, what else do you think is pending or where else do you want to introduce more products? So in the electric mobility side, uh, uh, one uh, segment where we wanted to represent and that's what I talked about in my opening commentary also was the high-speed fully connected IoT segment there. And that's getting filled up with the launch, impending launch of NXG as it gets into the launch sometime uh, in the first half of this year. So that is the one that is getting filled up in electric two-wheeler. That will make Greece Electric Mobility a strong player across all the three segments in slow speed with Rio, which we launched last week, last quarter. Uh, city speed, we have anyway been a very strong leading position there with Magnus EX. And uh, coming to high speed, one with Primus that we launched, and now getting completed with NXG, we would have a representation across all the four segments. On the three-wheeler side, one segment where we have not been represented is the electric three-wheeler L5 uh, format, and that 
We launched an electric cargo last last month, and passenger we should be launching anytime over the course of this quarter itself. So that fills the electric three wheeler, both cargo and passenger segments. So that will now give us, if you look at uh, Greece Electric Mobility, a full representation across all the customer segments in both two and three wheelers, and both for B two C and B two B play. Got it. Thanks for that elaborate explanation. I just one last question on the electric mobility side. Uh, when I mean now that you know the same thing is kind of getting settled, and uh, uh, are you looking at some uh, aggressiveness towards your campaigning or the marketing or you know some changing in the model? What what are you kind of you know uh, trying to uh, gain market share here? What else are you working on? Yeah, so look at uh, our current position as we get into this. Uh, 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 three basic facts and three initiatives. If you see, the three basic facts are that. Even without subsidy now running for eight months in a row, uh, Greece Electric Mobility continues to be amongst the top five electric scooters in the country in terms of its market share. So look at our YTD market share; it's close to about seven percent. I'm talking about YTD as in now; yeah, it's close to about seven. Right. And that's uh, and then we we can uh, with subsidy getting restored. Hopefully, it has enough resilience because subsidy will be to the tune of about an added fifteen percent. Thus make us more competitive in our product price proposition in the market. So that would be one key thing, and specifically to your question about regaining market share, so that gives us resilience in the market there. Added to that, there are both initiatives on products. One, new variants are being launched, and second, new products are being launched. Uh, one variant that has just got into the market is uh, a variant of Magnus, our flagship product Magnus EX, that's Magnus LT, which is still in the city speaks segment, but it's a, it attracts a different kind of a customer. And the second one, which is a new product and will attract a new set customer segment altogether, is the launch of NX3, which is a high-speed scooter. Uh, so these are the, some of the things, specifically in two-wheelers, if you see, these are the products that we're launching. And I already talked about three-wheeler fully fulfilling the product. Uh, uh, in addition to that, I think uh, there is, uh, and the point that you made on additional marketing spends and all that, I think we will continue to stay extremely capital efficient in our marketing right now, given that it's still a nascent category with low penetration. So we will be a lot more digital and direct marketing focused, and we will evaluate from quarter to quarter as to when is the time to go and, and really start increasing our marketing dollars. So, But the ROI in terms of marketing will remain very, very high priority for the company. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Dugar. May we request you to rejoin the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Rishikesh from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. So my question is with respect to our um, EV two-wheelers and three-wheeler volume. So how do you see the volume growth going ahead uh, from Q4 onwards and for coming one or two years for both two-wheelers as well as three-wheelers? Again, I think it's a it's a question about uh, forward guidance, both in terms of market and uh, and specific portfolio and uh, as. As I clarified, we don't have a policy. As, as per our policy, we will not be able to give you forward guidance. But I think the current trends are indicative enough. It has, uh, as you've seen, and two-wheelers slowed down a little uh, from the earlier kind of accelerated growth gradient, but we expect this continued kind of a growth there. And uh, in three-wheelers, you've already seen that market is at about pre-COVID levels. And uh, from here on, I think uh, we will have to see uh, as to how uh, depending on many other variables which are yet unknown, like incentive schemes and government uh, things and PLIs, how they play out. So we are in no position to give any speculative forward guidance on this. Okay, but I think if, if I see, have to see quarter on quarter, both two-wheeler as well as three-wheeler numbers, uh, the growth has, uh, they have dipped the numbers. Uh, so how do you see them going ahead? Uh, like, do we see them bouncing back to our previous numbers uh, from next quarter onwards or from coming after coming few quarters, can you please indicate? Again, a very, it's again a forward guidance in a way. Yeah? In a different way, you're asking the same question there. I, 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 I do see the numbers that you're talking about, which is that 
in the three-wheeler segment, you're seeing plateauing of numbers, all both in L3. Actually, there has been a decline quarter on quarter. I'm talking about the industry numbers. And uh, in L5, again, there is a very marginal low single-digit growth that you've seen in quarter three. So that's the current trend there. Yeah, if you look at the January numbers, they are no better. It's pretty much a flattish kind of a trend. So at best, the uh, published numbers are January, which I can talk about. And even in two-wheelers, the market has been pretty flattish. If you see the January number, if you look at the trending, the MRR, uh, converting into QRR, the January is about 81,000 registrations in electric two-wheelers, which is uh, almost equal to the 240-odd trend that we've seen in quarter three. So the published number is the best guidance I have at this stage. Okay, got it. Got it. No problem. Thank you. Sonal Minas, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. Uh, hi, this is Sonal Minas. I have a model. There was some problem in the line earlier. Uh, so your line is not clear. May I request you to use your handset, please? Is it better now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, sir, I have a question on uh, the e-mobility business. Given... Uh, the EBITDA loss and the cash burn in uh, this business, uh, hoping it's going to improve from here on. But uh, from a financial prudence perspective uh, uh, and maybe some internal workings, I, I, I am presuming so, like what is the level to which uh, this business can bear the losses given the cash balance? And uh, from a timeline perspective, what is it that you are near-term milestones uh, you want to uh, have for this business to break even uh, and cut the EBITDA losses. Yeah, so it's again a very strategic uh, kind of a question in terms of, uh, look, the first thing is to, uh, with get subsidy getting restored going forward, uh, we need to start showing resilience in our market share. You know, that's going to be the first nitpick that the management team will look at as to how can we come back and, and start showing a rebound back into market share. And as I had mentioned in the earlier answer, that we still continue to be having a strong position in our electric scooter segment with good traction for our products. So that would be the first matrix there. Second is going to be some of these new products that we are launching. We'll have to have that matrix in terms of looking at how they can contribute and Given that they will be uh, addressing uh, uh, largely a new customer segment, that's going to be a delta on top of the existing rebound that we are likely to see going forward. So that's going to be a delta sitting on top of it. And all this with a double-digit uh, gross margin and contribution, good contribution, healthy contribution margin, even without subsidy today, is only going to add up and show a road to profitability specifically that you're mentioning about. So I think these are the two initiatives that are currently there. Beyond that, there is a, a strong improvement in our overall cost uh, position over the last three quarters, and that will continue to keep adding fuel to the entire profitability road. Now. So I would just leave it at that at this stage. I understand that, sir. That's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Kapil Agarwal from Dux and Associates. Before you go ahead with your question, sir, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for providing the opportunity. I just want to know what is the status of frame subsidy for Ampere, number one, and number two, uh, uh, what kind of so response we are getting? use your handset, please. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Your voice is muffled, sir. Yeah. Now, uh, now can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So my first question is, what is the status of fame subsidy for Ampere? And the second question re regarding uh, uh, what kind of response we are getting from that Nepal market in terms of volume and pricing all that. Okay. Thanks. So to the first question, uh, and as you heard Akhila clarify in the subsidy uh, you know, clarification that he gave, 
we refunded the subsidy amount to MHI on 27th of October. Mm -hmm. And their products were taken up by the authorized testing agency immediately after that for same scheme recertification. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, our flagship scooter, uh, Magnus EX, has already been recertified for FAME 2 eligibility in December month. And now we are expecting other models to get certified soon. We are awaiting the MHI's approval at this stage to be registered, regularized on the FAME scheme soon. Uh, and this will happen by actual activation of the electric two-wheeler products on the NAP portal. So that's the status of the number one answer to your number one question. We have number two question on Nepal. We have uh, sent 80 Primus vehicles uh, in the last quarter to Nepal, and that's the one partner dealer that we have, uh, one of the largest firms in, in Kathmandu. And we've already started retailing the scooters there. About 20 of them have already got retailed out in the last about four to six weeks that the scooter has, has hit uh, the shores of Nepal there. And uh, we expect this to continue growing as we go forward. Uh, the pricing is extremely competitive. In fact, it's uh, the same pricing converted for Nepal currency that is prevalent in India. Okay, so uh, approximately by when we can say that our fame subsidy will be, uh, we can say, uh, started for uh, what wheelers? Any timeline or any? Uh, no. If you can, no. We, we have no position to give a timeline. We are just, as I told you, we await MHI's approval. So, but we are not in a position to give any timeline today. Okay. Okay. And any any other plan for we can say any other overseas market to tap any other overseas market market in near future like? That? No. At this point of time, we are in talks with some markets there, but at this point of time, nothing firm for me to commit at this stage. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Anubhav from Prescient Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, are there any fundraise plans for GM Pin in like uh, the recent future? Given like uh, cash has gone lower and like uh, it's still a loss making business and proceeds in future. So, are there any near-term fundraise plans, or are we even considering sort of an IPO? Uh, for this, yeah. Uh, thanks for the question, Akila. Yeah, let me take this one. Uh, so, Greece Electric is obviously uh, here for the long haul. They are currently in the process of uh, developing various new products, both in the two-wheeler and three-wheeler category. And uh, the management and the board, essentially, the board will take an appropriate decision as and when required. I hope that answers okay, the question. Do, uh, just as a follow-up, like, uh, do you see enough runway uh, given the cash on board and given uh, product development uh, spending and all, uh, and given the losses, like, do you see enough runway for the cash on books? Uh, as of now, we do have sufficient runway, and uh, the board is actively seized of this matter and will take an appropriate decision. And uh, uh, did we uh, apply for the PLI scheme uh, for like the easy business? Uh, uh. Sanjay, you want to take that? Yeah, I'll take that. So uh, we are not part of the PLI scheme, part of PLI. Okay, okay. And sir, in terms of the uh, uh, like, may we request you to rejoin the queue, sir? As there are several sure. questions waiting for their turn, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Faisal Zubair Hawa from HG Hawa and Company. Before you go ahead, sir, may I request all participants to press star and one if you want to ask a question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, sir, uh, in the uh, you know repeated questions about the electric mobility, the original business of you know our. Uh, 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 power uh, generators and you know uh, that, that gets largely ignored. So how are we doing in that business? And uh, uh, what is the kind of you know R and D we are trying to do? You know uh, to be uh, you know much ahead of uh, competition and uh, uh, you know because uh, Cummins seems to be doing very well. And you know how how are we you know placed against them now? 
So uh, let me uh, take that question. Uh, what are the kind of ROC and ROE that we have in that business? So uh, in terms of the products and the offerings, first of all, we have a diverse set of applications where we are selling our engines as well as our components. And the applications range on the way from auto to pumps to uh, gen sets and now to the components of various engines where of, uh, irrespective of the fuel which is used for the engine. Uh, that's one uh, line of growth. In terms of the others, we are looking at enriching our product mix through new product development. So fuel agnostic engine designs is a new product area because of the changing landscape on emissions. So our entire genset portfolio, for example, is CPCB4 compliant which is the latest uh, compliance norms on this application. Similarly, all our engines for the automotive applications in three-wheelers are also compliant to the latest uh, uh, norms that are there, uh, that are prevailing in India. The third area of work is new customer acquisition because our portfolio across Excel and engines opens up a larger landscape of potential customers for our products. That's the other dimension we are looking at. And all of this uh, is also linked to a growth in exports where we've got customers across EU as well as US where we are uh, selling both engines as well as engine components. And uh, <clears throat> this is underpinned with a higher capacity utilization of our current asset base, which is now up in the high 80s and 90s. And that is also giving us a uh, decent amount of operating leverage. We have a fairly high degree of ROC in the business as a result of all of these uh, actions. Needless to say, the cost focus is also very intense uh, in terms of both the design of bomb and the design of engines and components that we're doing. So do you mean to say that our capacity utilization is around 85 to 90 percent? And how, uh, how are we doing on orders? Is the industrial revival and the CAPEX cycle also boosting our orders? So the CAPEX, we, are a, uh, we have a complex set of manufacturing facilities, which is a combination of uh, assembly lines as well as manufacturing. So the bottleneck areas now have, there was a lot of work done on de-bottlenecking and increasing capacity utilization, which has happened internally, which is why we have created a fair amount of additional capacity, which we are able to cater to the next tranche of growth. So we are very thoughtful about how we spend our capex. Uh, and so we don't have a challenge in terms of meeting spikes in orders or increasing orders. And we have enough of an asset base to be able to do that without incurring uh, very, very heavy capex. Okay, uh, uh, would it be a right statement to make that, you know, now most of our divisions are like, you know, uh, firing on all cylinders and it's only this, uh, you know, a fame subsidy which is causing some kind of a you know, problem for us. And uh, uh, also, sir, uh, on many con calls previously, you have referred that you would like to build up an entire ecosystem of uh, ancillary suppliers for our uh, electric scooter. So how far uh, progress we have made on that? And uh, I mean, are, are there people ready to invest money for us uh, on a standalone basis to supply to us uh, so that, you know, our uh, you know capacity uh, can, you know, move up... Uh, substantially as in when, you know, our profitability comes in? Okay, so let me start. I think there were multiple questions there I'll attempt. So I think the first part is multiple businesses firing. I think that was the first part of the question. If you look at our strategy several years ago, right, uh, we went from a single fuel, single customer, single industry to multiple revenue streams which is Greaves uh, Engineering, which is components, both in the auto, non-auto, as well as construction of highway equipment now with the addition of Excel. So the addressable market increased there, right? And yes, uh, both on the engines as well as on the uh, Excel side, you're seeing the margin improvement and the revenue growth, uh, aided both by domestic and some exports. Now, coming to retail, you've seen the spares and the services part, and that's, again, the CFO talked about the margin growth in both of these businesses. 
Uh, Greaves Electric Mobility, obviously, uh, Mr. Bale has shared a lot of the details into that and the short-term challenges that that business faces. So uh, clearly, the businesses have moved from a single um, business, single fuel, to multiple businesses, multiple revenue streams, and both between B2B and B2C, thus moving towards a strategic focus of getting closer to the consumer, doing both B2B plus B2C, and leveraging life cycle value extraction over the value chain. And I think that's kind of what you're beginning to see, which is part of your next question, which is the ecosystem effects. When you look at uh, while the component play is done out of engineering, high-end engineering, precision component, manufacturing, supply chain, capability exists out of the first core. Retail is the post-purchase solutions, which has the spares, the service, the aftermarket sales. In between, of course, you sell the vehicles through electric mobility. Then, of course, we have two small enabler businesses, the Greaves Finance, which enables the financing of EVs, and technologies, which helps develop advanced technologies into some of these engineering divisions. So when you look at it, aided by the 20,000-odd mechanics, 10,000-odd retailers, pan-India presence, and uh, uh, growing capability between mechanical to mechatronics to electronics to sensors, that capability expansion, we are moving from an industry which is a metal bashing industry to over to a uh, lot of the mechatronics and then the software part. So I think that skill set addition is also happening as part of this transition. So I think that's kind of what you're seeing. Hopefully that shows why it's multiple revenue stream, it's diversified uh, across fuels, across industries, across geographies. Hopefully that addresses uh, your question. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, much appreciate you taking the time uh, this afternoon. Uh, obviously, our management will be available for answering any questions offline um, through our respective uh, uh, coordinators. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. On behalf of Greaves Cotton Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>